Welcome to our lecture online and here we have the sorrow cycle in all its detail. So this is a detailed look at the solar eclipse cycle that occurs every 18 years, 10 days or 10.3 days. So the total of 6,585.3 days per cycle. And so starting the cycle in 1997, we had an eclipse, a total eclipse on March 9th. September the 2nd was a partial eclipse. February 26th, we have a total eclipse. August 22, we had an annual eclipse and so forth. So you can go down the row and see how we had all these eclipses, a total of 40 in the cycle that lasted 18, 18 years, 10.3 days. Notice there were times that we had two sets of solar eclipses in the same year. Here we had in the year 2000, one on February 5th, one on July 1st, one on July 31st, and one on December 25th. So you can see we had two, two solar eclipses one month apart. They both had to be partial eclipses because we got one side of the sun on the one eclipse and a month later another side of the sun. As the moon slowly moved through the ecliptic plane, it caught the sun once at the top and again at the bottom. Maybe it went down or maybe it went up, I don't know. Um, but uh, either way, it was twice in a given month period, so to speak, while it was going through the ecliptic plane. Sometimes there's just a jump. For example, here, notice how every month there's about a 10-day difference, December 25th, December 14th, December 4th, November 23rd. There's about a 10-11 day shift every year as to when the solar eclipses occur. And here you, can, you see again, October 14th, October 3rd, September 22nd, September 11th, and then instead of jumping to about September the 1st, it jumps to August the 1st. It skips a complete month. With other words, the moon went through the ecliptic plane, but somehow it missed the ability to cover the sun's disk, and so we did not have a solar eclipse until the following month of the following year. And so that's kind of interesting that that happens. So sometimes it doubles up, sometimes it misses. But all in all, the whole cycle has about 40 eclipses, in this case, 40 exactly. And then notice, in 2015, 18 years later after 1997, 10.3 days later, so we have March the 9th, March the 20th, February 26th, um, March the 9th, and so forth. So 10.3 days later, we have the new set starting, the new cycle starting. Notice we have a total, total annular and a partial total total annual partial we have a partial annual total and partial so again the cycle doesn't only repeat but it also repeat in the type of solar eclipse that we're going to see based upon the position of the sun the moon and the earth really interesting somebody by taking enough observations finally noticed that wrote it all down and from that we can now predict in the future when the next solar eclipse are going to happen based upon the repetitive nature of the cycle of, the, of what we call the sorrow cycle of the solar eclipses. I thought it was really interesting that someone's actually able to figure that out, but now that we have, we, say, we have the benefit of knowing when the next solar eclipse is going to occur, what date, what type of eclipse is going to be, and if we work everything out in detail, almost down to the minute, can we figure out when the next solar eclipse is going to happen. So that's pretty amazing that they've done that.